politician, whānau member, a social change agent, sportswoman, passionately sport uh, focused actually, uh, but really somebody who can stand proudly in my identity. Uh, so I'm very proud to be mana whenua, uh, Ngāti Tūwhare Tōa, Ngāti Henuru Waikato. My war will come from um, Ireland, so I have a colonial connection back to Ireland. Um, and all of that uh, makes me who I am, and I'm incredibly proud to call myself a New Zealander. I was incredibly humbled to have been asked because I believe that acknowledging and commemorating and I guess celebrating 125 years of suffrage means you have to go back to go forward. And so being part of a, a group of women uh, of an initiative that wants to look back to go forward is incredibly powerful. It was the beginning of a movement that really has created opportunities for women uh, in our society and our parliament. And uh, Actually I can feel the intensity of the campaign and what it must have felt like to actually put everything into creating critical societal and cultural change for women. Uh, what it will enable us to do is to have an insight into what that journey looked like, what it felt like, what it sounded like. And so um, I'm really excited because I think the challenge for us today is what is that journey like now and where are we going and how are we going to get there. I think this um, 1890s depiction of I guess the courage and the bravery and the insight and the foresight of women at that time has made me look at, uh, you know, legends um, that not a lot of us know about, like Mere Te Tai Mangaka here, who with Kate Shepherd was a suffragette. Uh, she was in the Temperance Union, but she was also involved in the Kotahitanga Parliament, and she spoke in the Parliament. And actually, her challenge wasn't about us just having a vote; it was about our ability to represent the needs and aspirations of our people and to be able to stand as parliamentarians. Have I ever felt unequal? No, because I'm not. And that comes also from parents who loved me and a father particularly who told me I could do anything and be anything I wanted. But I've had experiences that have tried to tell me I am. Uh, that discrimination that we've all felt. Um, actually, I was thinking about what the most graphic time, and it was actually when I was a, a black fern, and we used to come together and we'd get gear that was 3XL, and we'd have to be really grateful, and I was always really ungrateful. I'm like, why are we getting all this secondhand stuff? Why aren't we getting gear that fits us? It was really disrespectful, and I used to get really angry about it. But that was, for me, more about the system and more about uh, the fact that there was no specific provision for women. It makes me empowered, empowered that I am part of a legacy that has continued that beginning of uh, the call for the vote uh, and then us being able to stand as parliamentarians, be parliamentarians uh, and actually to vote in a house on legislation and to be able to implement the things that we, that we care about, which I mean, I can say for women in the house has been about family. It has been about addressing issues to do with women's equality. So pay equity, family violence issues. Without that woman's voice, we wouldn't be as far as we are today. But what it also reminds us is that we've got a lot further to go and through collective action, we can do it. 